just another part of 2020. <laughs> Actually, it's a part of every year. Welcome to Simple Hobby Home Studying. I am Jenna, as usual, and today we are going to talk about another aspect of 2020 that we are loving, but guess what? It happens every year. It just seems like it's a little more elevated this year because it's 2020, but no, this happens every year. What are we talking about? We are talking about the BMSBs, the brown marmorated stink bugs. Most of us know them as just simply stink bugs. Um, but the brown marmorated um, just gives us an idea of the species, which of the stink bug, it has like a stripey uh, black and white kind of stripes on the legs and a little bit um, on the body. So we are going to show you today, I am going to show you today, how you make a simple hand stink bug trap. And I am gonna mention a, um, a stink bug trap that you don't have to use, you just set it out overnight and it collects them automatically. I'm gonna tell you some pluses and minuses of that trap. But this hand trap where you just take, uh, take this and go along and scoop up the stink bugs, it is wonderful, absolutely wonderful, with a little thing that we add. Um, you can see these traps are made all over online. Uh, super, super easy to make, but with a little addition that we add, it makes it awesome. So first of all, let's just get into it. Uh, the stink bugs, why are they trying to invade your home? All right, they are trying to invade your home because the days are getting shorter, the weather is getting cooler, and they're looking for some place to overwinter. And guess what? Your home is the perfect place for them to overwinter. All righty, folks, welcome to, uh, well, just another part of 2020. <laughs> Actually, it's a part of every year. These are stink bugs. They're commonly known as stink bugs. This is the window up on our second story, um, our bedroom, and look at all these stink bugs. They are all on the outside. What is happening here? Um, I did see on social media today that I'm not alone. This is happening to everybody today. It's unseasonably warm today uh, for mid-October. It got up to the high 80s. I think even it hit 90 today, I believe. So these guys woke up and realized that winter is coming. So what they're doing is they're trying to get inside to just lay low for the winter. And then come spring when it warms back up, then they will start uh, waking back up and they will try to get outside to lay their eggs outside. So they look for little cracks, usually in doorways, around doorways and windows, sometimes chimneys. They're looking for little cracks to get into your home. And then they just look for little dark places to um, just kind of overwinter, to hibernate behind picture frames are very, very usual spots for them, up in lighting fixtures because it's nice and warm, um, on the top of cupboards. Uh, they like to be behind things. They like to be on top of things. They like to kind of be hidden a little bit um, away from your daily activity. And that's why you usually don't see them all winter. So they get into your house in late fall, right about now, when those days are getting shorter, the weather, you know, we get some nice warm days and then the nights are cool. That's what's really kind of getting them to drive into homes. And then they overwinter all winter and then in the spring they wake back up and they look to get out. That's kind of the nice thing about stink bugs. There's two nice things about stink bugs. Not their stink, that's the worst thing. But one good thing is in the spring, they do try to get back out. They usually will not lay their eggs inside. They will not uh, mate inside. They save that for outside. So they try to get outside so that they can mate and they can lay their eggs. They very seldom lay their eggs and mate inside your home. Um, they are really, really trying to get out. And number two, they don't bite. So that's actually kind of a nice thing about these bugs. They are annoying. They sound like helicopters when they're flying around. And they do stink if they are scared, if they are excited, and if they are squished, they will stink. It is almost impossible to get that smell off your hand. You have to keep washing and washing and washing. And a lot of people who use the vacuum cleaner to suck them up, very effective, 
but your vacuum cleaner will start to stink and it is hard to get that smell out of your vacuum cleaner. So that's why I love these traps. We had an invasion last spring um, of stink bugs that overwintered in the house and then they woke up in spring and it was a literal invasion inside our home. They were on the windows trying to get back out in the spring, the doors trying to get back out and it was crazy. They were everywhere. So we checked online on what we could do about these stink bugs and we came up with two things that we did. The first one is what we're going to make today. It's just a simple hand trap. So what you need is I like these tall water bottles because it gives you an opportunity to put more stink bugs in it and because I'm short it gives me a little bit extra height to get up high um, rather than a shorter water bottle. So you take a big water bottle and did you know they make caffeinated water? It's amazing. So you take a tall water bottle, a uh, smart water, any kind of, um, this is a great value, caffeine water, um, the life water bottles are great and you're going to cut off the top right at the top. I like to do it kind of right above where the label starts. I recommend for this a really sharp knife. If you want, you can use a pocket knife or you can use scissors. Scissors are hard to get started. So I definitely always like to start with the knife. So I'm just going to cut the top. The sharper the knife, the better. And you just kind of go around. Rather than just cutting straight down, I'm turning the bottle and going around. And if you find it starts getting flimsy towards the end, right that last little part, it starts getting really flimsy and it's hard to cut that last little part, rather than trying to saw through it and um, possibly nicking myself with a knife, I usually take my scissors and I just cut that last little part. There we go. So I just cut the last little part. So now you have the top and you have the bottom. What we're gonna do is with the cap off, we're just gonna take and invert it and put it right in like this. So I'm taking, inverting the cap and just setting it right in there. You don't have to push it in very uh, tight if you don't want to. You can push it down there a little bit just so it's snug. And you're gonna check just to make sure that that top is kind of centered and not too crooked. So you're just gonna finagle it a little bit and just, and I think that's a lot of that is just my, o, my own little um, OCD of wanting it to be straight. But I'm gonna make it nice and straight so that it fits in there like that. So you can see the cap is right there and you can see it doesn't go all the way down in. It just sits and nestles in there beautifully. So now we're gonna do something that just makes this a little bit easier um, to use and make sure that this top doesn't come off. We are going to take some tape, any kind of tape, painter's tape, uh, wasabi tape, uh, duct tape, black tape. Um, I've got this masking tape that's real handy. And we are just going to take this, rip off a piece, and we're just going to go right along this seal. And if you want to go up and over, if you have some sharp edges from the plastic, you're welcome to go up and over the plastic. This will fold over just a bit, I think just the way I did it. Um, and so we're just going to go around just like that with our masking tape. And this is online, this is what we found online to do. And I drink a lot of these tall water bottles anyways, and so it worked out perfectly. I just saved all of them. Um, and I, I told Kevin, I was like, okay, cut all the tops off these, and I'm going to go mass production of water bottles. I think we have like 30 in a bin that we have to just finish making. Um, and because I drink so many of these tall water bottles, we just use these, we fill them up with the bugs, and we just throw the whole thing away. If you want, you could easily take this tape off once they're full of as many bugs as you want. You could take the tape off, dump it out, and then reuse it as many times as you want. Super easy. So there we go. So now we have the top is taped and it's just got that so it's completely solid. Now this is what we saw online and it worked beautifully. Um, the way it works is they go in there and if they do even crawl up the sides to get back out, which they can, this because it's like a funnel here, they get caught on the sides and they don't know enough to come down the top and then crawl out the top. But we found some smart bugs in our house and we did find that some of them were escaping. They figured out, and I think they used a buddy is how we kind of watched it. They used a buddy, they got their backs together and the buddy got on the funnel part, crawled down and then crawled back up. We had some smart stink bugs in our house last year. So what we did, and this worked so perfect and we've just added it, um, to every trap thereafter is we added a little diamaceous earth. Now diamaceous earth is just simply, um, it's just little fossils, just little powdered fossils. 
and it's a powder. You don't want to breathe the powder in. It is um, irritating to the lungs. So we're using just a little bit and this is no problem just to stick it in here. I use it uh, in my chicken's nest boxes to make sure that the, the bugs and stuff stay out of my nest boxes or if there are any bu uh, bugs in the nest boxes, they're killed by it. And what it does is this little, little ground up skeletons, um, or fossils I should say. So what it does is it gets into the exoskeletons of the bugs and also just dries them out period just on their body but it also gets into their exoskeletons into their armor and as they move it literally cuts them up and then dries them out and kills them and it makes it very very slippery because it's a powder very slippery on the sides of this container so they can't really crawl up the container. You can see uh, we have here this uh, this trap of bugs and they are already they can't crawl up none of them can crawl up the the sides of this trap all right so we have our trap and if you hear a pitter patter I have a dog right down here he decided to join me so I'm gonna pour about two tablespoons I'm just gonna pour a little bit in here it's about two tablespoons and you can get diamaceous earth at any farm store uh, rural king tractor supply you can get it online um, you can get a 50 pound bag of it from Azure standard if you are an orderer from them um, and so we got a 50 pound bag of it I want to say like three years ago and I'm still using it and I use it all the time and so yes yeah, so we just put about two tablespoons of diamaceous earth on the bottom there and once again that kills them it prevents the trap from starting to stink as well um, I have found that when I wasn't using the diamaceous earth it seemed that my traps from last year started to stink because the stink bugs got all uh, anxiety ridden and <laughs> they got all mad and stuff in this trap and they started emitting that odor well with the diamaceous earth it I don't know if it kills them quicker or if it just dries out that odor causing thing. I don't know. It's just these traps don't seem to smell at all, even if the, the stink bugs get angry in there. So you can make tons of these, and we do, and you just put them all over the house. Like we have one in every room. We have one at the top of the stairs. We have one at the entryway so that whenever you see a bug, usually they're crawling up the, the wall or they're on the window, you just take this. Let's say, let's see, where's the bug? Let's say the bug is on this window right here. You just take this and just kind of glide it there. You can tap it a little bit and the bug will fall down into the funnel and right into that diamaceous earth and they're stuck. They're stuck there forever. And once again, once you're done with this trap, you can throw it away or you can empty it out and take the tape off and clean it out and reuse it. Totally up to you. Um, but it is wonderful, absolutely wonderful. So the addition of the diamaceous earth in there is a key, an absolute key, it's wonderful. Now, the second thing that we saw was a trap that you just put out at night and it attracts the bugs and you don't have to do a thing. And in the morning, your trap is full of bugs. You take, and I'm not going to do this, we did a couple of them, and we found that they were okay. I'm not going to do this on video because I didn't want to get a whole other two liter of pop and drink it. We had to drink like a couple two liters of pop in just a couple days to make these traps. And uh, the diabetes, I, I feel like I had diabetes from that. He's laying on my foot. <laughs> Buddy is laying on my foot. So with this trap, it's the same kind of concept as the other trap. You take and cut the top off, you invert it, and the addition to this one, which makes it so you can just set it out at night, is you're going to put a little puck light in the bottom because these bugs are attracted to light. So this is just a little touch puck light. You can see it turns on. I think this is an older one, so it's not as bright. But these puck lights, you can get them at Lowe's, Home Depot, Amazon, wherever. Um, we got a pack of, I think, 8 or 12 or something like that. And they're very inexpensive and they last a long time. But uh, you take this little puck light and you put it at the bottom here. And you can see the bottom is usually clear, but we covered it with black electrical tape. There we go, so that the bugs would be attracted and want to climb up rather than just all attract to the bottom part right here. So you take masking tape, which is kind of grippy, and you put four pieces of masking tape around your cylinder, around your two liter here. Um, this this one that we have in here we did put in a ziploc bag because i went ahead and i added the diamaceous earth to this trap so that it would kill those bugs a little quicker um, and i didn't want the diamaceous earth getting into the battery compartment of this little light so it is in a little ziploc bag in there and then we sprinkle diamaceous earth and then we put the top on like this and then you want to put that masking tape right over so that it kind of holds that in place and then at night what we did is we took a wooden spoon or a stick, I can't even remember now, and we poked it down in there to turn the light on because once again it's just a little touch light, this little puck light, you just 
push it to turn it on. So I put a little stick or a wooden handle spoon, I can't remember, and put the light on and then we just set it somewhere. Usually it was up by a window or by a door where the stink bugs were already trying to go to get out. And we just set it there and then they would crawl up the side, crawl and then they'd fall in, crawl in or fall in, and then they were stuck in there. And then in the morning we'd come down and there'd be a few bugs. Now, the reason we didn't make a ton of these and use these a ton was because it really didn't catch all that many stink bugs. Each morning at the height of our infestation, there were maybe five or ten stink bugs and we could catch, and there were still some all over the window and the door by where this was. So we could catch 40 or 50 in a minute with this, just hand catching them. And so it seemed... I mean, we still did this for a couple days just to kind of help us and I guess make us feel better. But the hand ones, that's where it was at, these hand traps. And so we're not even using this, these this year. I don't want to pay for the money for the batteries of the puck lights. Um, so we're not even going to use those. Uh, we are just catching these as they're coming in. But we're also checking, like if I have a door where I'm happening to see a bunch of stink bugs, then I look around the edges of that door and make sure that there's not something wrong with the ceiling. Um, the seal, I guess the, you know, the seal around the door, not sealing a pie, but the seal around the door. And so I check to see if there's a bunch of stink bugs coming in a certain spot, obviously they can get in somehow. And so I need to fix that so that no more get in. But yes, yeah, so that's how you make an easy hand trap. They are so, so simple. I love them. Um, yeah, just drink your water, make your traps, and you're good to go. The diamaceous earth, that's the key. That's the key to this trap. So I hope that helps you out a little bit. I know a lot of people on Facebook have been going nuts with the stink bugs, but just remember the two most important things. They do not bite, and they will not mate and lay eggs. Usually will not mate and lay eggs in your house. If they do, it's going to be on the underside of your plant leaves. If you have a lot of indoor plants, it's going to be on the underside of your plant leaves or at the base of your plants. That's where they're going to lay their eggs if they're the right plants for them to do that. They are always going to prefer to get outside first. So they're trying to get outside. But you can't really just leave your door open for them because then every cat that you have or mouse that's around your property is going to just waltz right into your house. And so, yeah, so you need something to, to catch them. And if you want to do a catch and release program, that's up to you. These are bugs. Please don't be that weirdo. <laughs> I'm just kidding. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you got a little information about how to make these little traps. They're perfect. They're wonderful. The diamaceous earth is the key, and I think that's it. So you guys have a great day. Do what you can with what you have, wherever you are, and we will see you later. Bye-bye. Cuts in, in it like little cut and it also create so not only it's that buddy what are you doing why you always come in lay down somewhere yes buddy right there you want to be right there he's laying down at my feet right there oh right there you go there's your nose So what happens here if they do get in, it's annoying. They get in and they hide behind pictures, um, they'll hide in plants, they'll hide in drawers, in nooks and crannies, and they will just overwinter. They will kind of hibernate and just overwinter and then when it warms up in the spring and you get the longer days of daylight, they will try to get outside to lay their eggs and to procreate outside. Stink bugs seldom lay eggs and procreate inside. Um, they will sometimes in plants, but usually they won't do it until they get outside. And if they can't get outside, then they just won't procreate. Uh, they really, there's very few good environments inside a home for them to lay their eggs. So they're not so bad, but you know, if these things get excited, if they get angry, if they get squished, they stink. And that's why they're called stink bugs. So they're kind of annoying to have in the house. So I'm excited to show you a little stink bug trap that we're going to make. 
super easy. Here we go.